Today we're going to look at Monte Carlo methods for reinforcement learning. Um, so what is Monte Carlo? Monte Carlo is actually a casino in Monaco and uh, the Monte Carlo methods have a long history um, but then eventually somewhere along the lines uh, this name became popular that we, we call the Monte Carlo methods uh, you know because such methods are used in some kind of prediction game in Monte Carlo casino and stuff like that. So basically you can read up in Wikipedia um, about this. But uh, essentially it's a very simple uh, and intuitive approach for um, estimating using repeated random sampling. Okay, uh, have you done this in any other course uh, before? No, sir. No, okay. Sir. No, sir. okay, fine. So essentially, broadly, uh, the, the Monte Carlo methods can be used to do many things. And once you see, it's it's actually very intuitive to do uh, use that. So methods of estimating using repeated random sampling. Uh, so let's see a couple of examples before we uh, start to apply this in, in RL. Uh, so suppose we have to estimate the value of pi, the area of the unit circle. Now, of course, um, I mean, given that we, we don't, suppose we don't know the value of pi and we want to estimate and by, by that what we mean is the value of pi is essentially the area of the unit square. So suppose we know that this is the area of the, it is the area of the unit square and we want to, sorry, unit circle and we want to uh, estimate the value, right? So what we will do is we'll draw coordinates or the n points uniformly at random uh, where each coordinate is between minus one and one, right? So each coordinate x, y will be between minus one and one. And then what we will have is that the points will be uh, uniform random points in the square with area equal to four. So it will be basically something like this, right? So if you, if you, if you uh, just uh, pick random points where x is between minus one and one and y is also between minus one and one, right? So then all your points will be, all these green and blue points, all of them, right? So you will get uh, these points. So now, uh, and suppose you can increase n, right? So this number of points, of course, I think this picture is around 1000 or 10,000 um, drawn on matplotlib. Uh, but uh, you can increase that or it decrease that, it's up to you. Now, how will you uh, um, estimate the value of pi from here? I have already drawn the blue circle to give you the um, hint. So you, you actually uh, draw so many random points. That means you know the coordinates of X and Y. In, let's say in a, in a list or an array or whatever, you know coordinates of um, 10,000 uh, x, y points according to this minus one to one, right? So you, you know the coordinates of all these points. So how will you, how will you um, um, estimate the area of the blue circle? Okay, so what we will do is we'll count the number of points such that x squared plus y squared is less than one. So we know x and y, so we can check whether x squared plus y squared is less than one. And uh, we'll just count the number of points small n uh, such that we, it satisfies this property. So th those are the blue points, right? So those are the points inside the uh, unit circle. And we know the area of the square is four, area of this is what we need to find. So it's essentially pi will be 4n by capital N. As we uh, take n large, we'll get a good estimate. All right. So this is actually the code. Uh, let's actually go to the, uh, let's actually go to the notebook and, uh, you know, do that a bit and then we'll come back here again. Um, all right. So Monte Carlo simulation, this is the code. What we are doing is x, uh, np.random.uniform from minus one to one, n of them. Now I have 
set n equal to 1000 to start with just to show you what happens for a small n y is also that z equal to x square plus uh, y square so these are three arrays okay um, now count uh, such that sum z uh, count equal to sum z is less than one so this is a true false thing right so this is a true false array this is a boolean array if you sum them you will get the count and you can print it okay, so let's try that uh, so this is not such a good estimate if you make it this it's uh, slightly better so 10,000 then maybe 100,000 well it's better right 1 million uh, okay so whatever so 3.14 is what I remember about pi anyway uh, something like this so basically essentially this is using what is called the law of large numbers that um, yeah I mean it's applied everywhere right so if you have some expected value if you uh, perform that exper experiment enough number of times it will converge the expected value so basically that is what it is so the idea is you have to basically take a lot of samples now this is a notebook i prepared for some other purpose i will i will uh, you know upload this uh, you can go through i'm not going to this is not about reinforcement learning although it's it's actually a you know casino and stuff like that which shows that the house always wins. Uh, but this is one example you can actually look at. So th these kind of numerical methods can be used to uh, compute uh, uh, an uh, integral, right? So basically a definite integral. So, um, so if, you, if you want to compute the integral uh, sine um, zero to pi sine x dx, essentially that is the area under this thing so you can uh, apply the same kind of method right so you can draw x equal to np dot random uniform 0 to pi n and so on so basically uh, you can mm, i mean these are probably i mean there will be already inbuilt methods to uh, compute this integral but uh, these are the things people can use to ex these ideas people can extend to you know, compute definite integrals of complicated functions for which you do not actually have a very nice formula. Okay, so uh, so that's it for uh, for the notebook. I'll I'll give you the notebook. You can go through the other things if you are interested. But our main goal was just to understand what Monte Carlo methods are all about. And now we'll be back to our um, reinforcement learning thing. So how we will how will we use Monte Carlo methods for policy evaluation? We are jumping back to RL. Uh, what will you do for policy evaluation? Uh, again, remember that the goal of policy evaluation is estimate um, state values or also action values maybe. But let's start with state values. State value v pi s of a policy pi for all states. What is it? given that i am at state s what is the expected return from here if i follow policy policy pi now unlike the dynamic programming uh, based approaches that we have uh, done in the last uh, until last class till last class here we will not assume that we know the dynamics of the environment that means exactly what is that that means if I perform an action, what are the probabilities of going to which state? And if I perform an action, what is the probability of getting what reward? Right. So the probability, basically, the uh, reward and next state and next reward probabilities we do not know. If we do not exactly know the model, then we will have certain limitations, namely. I will also explicitly talk about it. Namely, when we did dynamic programming, uh, when we use dynamic programming to do this policy evaluation uh, and uh, improvement, uh, we we actually use the Bellman equation, knowing, assuming that we know p, right? And that we cannot do anymore. So we cannot uh, uh, assume that we know p. 
uh, and that's why the Bellman equation actually gave us the power to uh, compute or estimate the return from this state in terms of the weighted returns of the subsequent states weighted by the probabilities that we already know that we that we assume to know but that we cannot do anymore but our idea is we will use monte carlo methods that means well let's just do let's just follow this policy many times and see what happens so just like you know uh, that naive example of estimating pi if we do something like this so what we will do instead instead of going to the bellman equation we'll try to estimate it from this itself okay so v pi s is the expected value of gt the return i mean the ultimate return accumulated return given now i am at s st equal to s so the monte carlo approach would be that estimate the expected return from many samples of gt with my current position being s okay now that means what we need to do is we'll if if it's a game then we'll have to play the game many times we'll have to play the game many times and we'll then figure out okay if i'm at this state i have to be in this state many times and follow whatever policy it is many times so that i know from this state what is my expected return so we will we'll uh, we'll sample uh, episodes repeatedly so in this case we will actually assume that the task is episodic uh, although we can have a discount factor but the task is episodic so we'll uh, uh, we'll uh, use the sampling repeatedly compute the sample returns from each state visited and then update the average returns for the state as new sample returns obtained i'll go into the details but here i want to first mention two points before uh, before we actually jump into the algorithmic details so you get the idea that we will have to play the game many times so in, let's talk about in terms of games instead of generically episodes so we have to play play some game many times and we have to be in the same state also many times so for all states and then whenever we uh, so and this when we play we actually encounter samples so we don't know the formula of p we don't know the probabilities the dynamics but when we play according to that dynamics the environment acts and then we get rewards according to that dynamics and we also uh, go to a next state at every step so then from that state we know that we got this reward and we went to that state so basically these are basic these my these are my sample points now then we have to if we if we if we come back to the same state in this game once maybe this game many times or maybe in another game again we are in the same position okay and we ended the game in whatever way we could then we know for this state that we have let's say we have 1000 samples of what could happen if i am at this state and then you can average the expected return average the return of these um, samples and that would be my expectation i mean that would be my estimate now recall that uh, just like our uh, bandit problem so that was also similar right in the bandit problem uh, we did not know the probability uh, distribution of the bandit and what all that we could do was we could we could actually you know take an action we could choose one of the arms and uh, based on that we'll get some reward and then based on that we'll average those rewards from the same arm to make an estimate for that arm and one of the naive ways would be you keep a keep a list of all the rewards you got from this particular arm or this particular action or state or whatever it is right but we remember that that's not needed to be done in fact we can uh, uh we can simply uh, uh sorry we can simply keep track of the number of times or number of samples i have encountered for this and the number of uh, and the total or average so far right so then we can update given a new sample we can update that so this is what we will keep in mind and then 
we will try to formulate how we use Monte Carlo for policy evaluation and control. Okay. Um, ah, just a moment. This, this will actually confuse you. This is a little bit of a thing. All right. So now uh, let's have a deeper look at if you play the game once or that means if you follow the policy if you follow some policy and you you go through one episode of um, one episode um, starting somewhere so let's say um, you start at any state st and then your episode goes like this st then st plus one st plus two dot 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 st plus k And finally, the terminal state is capital T. Now, in some cases, I think uh, ST plus K is meant to be ST. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you can say ST plus K is ST. Uh, I just want to show you the formula. So this will not really matter. Um, and what we want to do is as we, as we go through this episode or play this game once, we will visit all these states. Finally, we can calculate how much reward we got. And in, uh, in the process, we can have one sample of what is the value of ST, what is the value of ST plus one. So these are all different, different states, right? So then we can collect samples of what would happen or what could happen if I am at these states. So one episode will actually give us samples for many states. Right? Is this is this thing clear? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Uh, everybody, I mean, uh, please make sure that you understand. Uh, it, it should not be that only one or two people uh, understand or you know respond, and others don't. So, so basically, what will happen is if I go through this whole thing, uh, at when I'm at ST, uh, and then finally I finished it. So that means I would have computed the uh, the eventual return starting at ST. So I, I will have one uh, sample for the value of VST and so on. So for all of them, right? I can I can also think of I started here because it's a Markov, Markov process, then the past wouldn't matter. So I would have started here and then finished at ST, right? So then thinking of that scenario, I can actually have a value for ST plus two. But these are not the final value uh, V pi is, T plus two or V pi ST, uh, because this is just one sample of that. So let's actually see the calculation. So typically we, we say the reward for the terminal state is zero. So, uh, so we have finished it here or some reward basically, but the G will be after this, you have nothing, right? So it finished here. So, uh, so this reward is something some constant reward, yeah, it can doesn't have to be zero, right? So it, if you win the game, it's a positive reward. If you lose, it's a negative and some stuff like that. But whatever it is, this reward is known. So this is a reward that is kind of known. Or if once you go through this whole thing, you actually know what is the reward. Then we can we can actually do the formula this way. So then the GT plus K for the previous state is just this much and this is gamma to the power k gt plus k gamma is our discount factor and that discount factor is up to us right so we know the value so if we if we get the last reward as as we get the last reward we can backtrack and we can calculate gt plus k and we can use that as one sample of vt v s st plus k so that means i have got one possible sample of this thing now we, let's backtrack more so the previous thing will be gamma k gamma to the power k minus one gt plus k minus one will be this thing, okay? And now, yeah. So now you have you know this reward also because you have gone through this, right? And so on. So you will using this you can actually update something on the previous day. And if we come back here using this formula, so we have backtracked it using this formula. We can update. This that means we have one sample of VST plus one, and GT is one sample of VST, right? So essentially, if we go through one episode, 
we can have samples for all of them once right so we can have samples for all of them once um, okay so now let's uh, um, apply these two things one is this another is that uh, these this one backtrack gives us one sample each for each state but that's just a starting of the estimate you will actually go through many such episodes and you will calculate you will uh, get many samples for each state and that we know that we can simply uh, keep track of the current average and the number of samples so that we can update it so now we are ready to actually look at the algorithm so the policy evaluation algorithm using monte carlo then would be you initialize the estimate vs arbitrarily for all states the number of samples ns to be zero for all states okay uh, because we haven't seen any sample yet then we keep uh, you know loop forever or whatever you know stop when you you, you cannot do any more so generate an episode following the policy pi as s0 a0 r1 s1 a1 r2 and so on so on so on now g to be zero now we'll do the backtrack so the next loop is about backtrack so for each ta t is equal to t minus one t minus two okay backwards g will be gamma g will be updated as gamma g plus uh, r t plus one, g g plus r t plus one and then we'll update our value for s t to be using that formula so we have already seen n s of these before n s times v s t before plus g so that is the new sum divided by the new count right so that is the update formula and we update the count okay so this is then the policy evaluation algorithm any uh, question doubts from this Okay, I mean, uh, this is pretty simple. Essentially, just the backtracking is uh, what it is. Now, um, there is one little detail there. Uh, I said that when I go through one episode, each state, for each state, I get one sample. That may not happen, right? I mean, it's possible that I go through one episode and the same state comes back. Right? So I can encounter the same state more than once. So it can happen something like this. I'm at ST is equal to S. And then later on again, ST plus some L equal to S. And so on, right? Now in the algorithm that I showed you, uh, we did not care about it. That means what we did was, we would, comp we would get one sample of V S T G T equal to V S T here and update it and we'll also get another sample of vst same as right this as is same as this so we'll update it in the same place but this sample is different because it will be g t plus l so so this talks about the return from here to here uh, the discounted return from here to here and this will talk about the return from here to here so they will actually be the, the estimates will be different and uh, we will update both so we will we'll, we'll uh count both and we'll update both so that thing is called uh, uh every visit monte carlo right so we consider all visits to the state and that's the algorithm we have seen the um, older version is first visit monte carlo where we only consider the first visit to a state s in an episode to collect the sample so if we want to do the first visit Monte Carlo, then the code will look something like this. It's the same code, except that here we have an extra condition. We will do this update unless ST, some ST here appears before this. That means we will only do the update for the first time in the episode a particular state is visited. So what is the difference? Okay, so the difference of course is we will update less number of times so we we get less number of samples right but intuitively we might think we have more consistency it is very similar to uh, this in place or two array 
uh, thing that we saw last time, right? So again, uh, what happens is both algorithms will make the estimate Vs converts to V pi S for every state S if the number of samples for each state is large enough, right? So kind of goes to infinity. Now, in, in practice, however, every visit, which is a more modern, so first visit Monte Carlo uh, apparently has been studied for you know, 70 years now, 70, 80 years now. Uh, but every visit Monte Carlo is much more modern. It's actually Sutton's work. And um, that converges faster. So the first visit Monte Carlo converges at the rate, uh, um, the standard deviation, converges means the standard deviation of the estimate goes down, okay? At the rate of uh, one by root n, where n is your number of, uh, number of states visited, I think. And this one goes uh, the, to, uh, this one converges quadratically, so it's much faster. And every, every business Monte Carlo actually uh, is more useful in other modern techniques that we'll, uh, we'll, we'll probably see some of them later, but uh, if you study more, you'll see more. Okay, so these are the two versions of uh, policy evaluation using Monte Carlo. So you are not changing the policy here. What we are doing, is given a policy, we are estimating the state value of the policy. If we start at this state, what is the expected return from this state? All right. Now, uh, turns out that since we don't know the dynamics, just estimating the state values will not be enough. And we also estimated action values uh, for uh, dynamic programming, but uh, there is a subtle difference which I told a bit about before that the which equation are we using, right? So that was the point. But how do you estimate action values? Estimating action values will also be similar. It's just same thing as state values, but uh, given an extra condition that I'm taking one particular action. So instead of estimating V pi S, we'll estimate Q pi S and A for a state action pair. So the episodes are still the same. ST taking action AT goes to ST plus one, then taking action AT plus one goes to ST plus two and so on, right? So just like we were sampling, so if we are at ST and we, we actually receive rewards, right? So we actually receive rewards, we actually experienced this. So we received rewards. So we know the expected return for ST. So the same way we will also know the expected return for ST and AT because in this case, this is one sample of taking a from ST taking AT, right? So you have actually done this one. So, so Monte Carlo is all about do it and learn, right? So do it and learn. So you have actually done this. You have done AT being at ST. So that will give you one experience of what happens if you take action AT from ST. So same thing, similar to the state value estimate process, we can actually estimate sampling values of Q S T A T instead of just doing, um, uh, yeah, instead of doing V S T, okay, we can actually do Q S T A T. Now, again, we can have first visit and every visit, every visit variance as before, but um, yeah, so that's, that's not a difficult thing. This is uh, simple and analogous, but now it's time that we, uh, look at a key difference between the dynamic programming and Monte Carlo approaches. The DP assumption is that we know the dynamics P. So we can use this equation, right? We can use this equation and we can use this equation iteratively where I, I am using this P. So given that I'm at S, what if we know the P from S, S and A, if I, if at S I, I apply action A, what is going to happen? I clearly know this, right? In real life, you don't really know that to start with confidently, right? So if, if at this state S I do, I take this particular action in Monte Carlo, I don't know this, uh, this probability distribution P beforehand, so all that I can do is I can actually perform the action and 
will end up in some state and end up getting some reward. So we cannot use this equation. Instead, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, we cannot use this equation. Instead, um, <clears throat> okay, so if we could use this equation in, in other words, then for every action, for if you are at a state S, for every action A, you would know what would be the reward you will get, right? If you take action A, this will be my reward and I will go to that state. So that much you knew for every state, right? Uh, and we don't know that. And if we knew what we could do is how to improve a policy would be from a state, we can simply look ahead all possible actions and all possible rewards and choose the greedy improvement, right? You could do that if we uh, knew the dynamics. In Monte Carlo, we don't know the dynamics. And then what is going to happen is to know which is which is the action, which action A is best from our state is. Remember, for policy improvement, that is our approach, right? Policy improvement, our approach is greedy. Sitting at this, this state is, I want to see whether this is the best action according to my current policy. I mean, according to my current, whether my current policy is the best at, at this state, right? So, so if I find any other action which is better, then I will actually uh, switch that in my policy. So to do that here, we actually need to compute the action value pairs in Monte Carlo. So we'll compute the action value pairs in Monte Carlo in this way that uh, we'll, we'll sample STAT, we'll sample the rewards for STAT, uh, the eventual rewards for STAT for many such episodes. Okay, so now let's actually uh, have a look at the control algorithm, policy control algorithm, combining the evaluation and uh, policy improvement. So this is the standard thing, right? So given a pol, I mean, you start with the policy pi, okay? And you have some estimates. So capital Q is essentially in this picture, capital Q is the estimates for action values. So um, you have some estimates. So initially, your, neither your policy pi is great, you are starting with a random policy and neither whatever the policy may be your estimates are not even uh, perfect for this policy pi so everything is you know all over the place so what we do is we we evaluate so then q slowly slowly becomes the estimate for policy pi and Based on that, we also change policy pi and this iteration we keep doing, all right? So in other words, we do not actually, so because we actually do not have those Bellman equations. Uh, remember in, in dynamic programming, we use the Bellman equation as an update rule to kind of completely evaluate a policy, right? But, um, but here, we will not even do that. We'll just keep iterating, okay, with all samples. So what will you do? We initialize state action probability pi s arbitrarily, okay? So uh, basically take a random policy. So this is, is essentially you initialize your random policy. That means given a state, your actions can be totally random. Initialize take state action values also arbitrarily for all states and actions. So this is supposed to be a value for this, but it's actually not right now. So right now it's a random initialization. And our we have to update, so we need the number of samples for SA, right? So for every state and action pairs, we need to know how many samples have we encountered. Now we loop forever. Choose a starting point A, zero and S0. Okay, rather S0 and A0, I should say, it's just a bit confusing. So you start from some state and take some action. That is your starting point. I'll come back to this point later. How do we choose a starting point? I, uh, this is going to be important, but I'll come back to this later. So suppose you choose a starting point. Now generate episodes, just like before, gen just like the policy evaluation thing, generate episodes following, a policy, following your current policy pi, right? So this kind of episode. And you set G is equal to zero first, and then you backtrack just similar to previous, uh, previously you backtrack and you set G is equal to gamma G RT plus one and you update 
Okay, so instead of VS, we are now just doing QSTAT, same thing, okay, same update. Um, and we update the number of times STAT pairs have been seen. Okay, so this is what uh, we do. Now, um, finally, what we do, so this much was uh, updating the updating the estimate for the value of the state action pairs. And now what we do, we now see uh, given the state is our current policy the best if, because these things have changed, right? Q, S, T, A, T, some of them have changed. So because this keeps changing, we also keep updating our policy. So we update our policy uh, over uh, for ST, we go over all possible actions, okay, and update our policy to be uh, pi ST. Now, this is actually a deterministic. Um, so, now this policy actually becomes deterministic. So, you actually always do this, take the maximum one, and uh, it's not a probability anymore. So, there can be an issue here because we are doing Monte Carlo and our assumption of convergence lies on the fact that we would see all samples for all state action pairs infinitely many times or large enough number of times. So the possible issue is if the policy pi gets deterministic, then the uh, you know uncertainties goes uh, go, go down and then some state action pairs may never be sampled. Right. So you will never encounter some state action pairs. And then your estimate of QSA for a lot of pairs SA will actually uh, still remain very bad. And that will hurt your whole process of convergence anyway. So one solution to that is exploring start. So that means uh, you choose the starting pair this starting state and starting action randomly so that all possible state action pairs have probability greater than zero. So that means even if you do not uh, encounter some state action pair now, you will you will go through you will go through infinitely many episodes this way, right? I mean, you will actually so at least sometime or the other this state action pair will definitely come in your starting point. So then. Essentially, we need to add this thing here randomly uh, two starting points A0 and A0 randomly, and this we call the exploring start. Okay, so uh, so this is then gives you one uh, I mean, the introduction to Monte Carlo policy control with exploring start. Um, in the next class, we will see a bit more of uh, Monte Carlo. And then we'll go into uh, temporal difference learning. Any question uh, immediately? So what about the next actions? Like uh, initial one we are storing randomly and the mm -hmm. next actions, are, won't those also be needed to choose randomly? No, uh, I mean, okay. So there are actually approaches. Um, so just like your epsilon greedy, uh, there are uh, epsilon greedy is actually a, a specific version of something called epsilon soft, um, where you can you can explore here and there also, but in this algorithm, what it what it does is just the starting is exploring start, and then on one then onwards you follow your policy pi. Now. This only makes makes sure because you will actually generate infinitely many episodes. You will eventually get all action, uh, all uh, state action pairs. But your concern is valid. That well, after that I am not exploring at all. Um, so then we may not actually do a very good job. Yes. So we will come to that in the next classes. Okay. Sir, uh, here the update of the policy will happen at the end of every episode, right? No. 
Uh, yeah, right, right, right. Every episode, right. Yes. So once one episode episode finishes, so you actually follow the policy pie and create this whole episode. You experience the whole episode. So it's like you play this game once and then uh, you look back uh, what happened all throughout. And so this is your look back, okay? So you play this game once, this is your look back and then you update the, uh, this, a, the value for this pair, then value for the next pair, then the value for the next pair. Sir, so another doubt in the last line, mm -hmm. uh, we have argmax over A, but uh, aren't we just taking one action? So how, how will it be argmax over A? No, no, okay. So you see, we have these Q values for all states and actions. Okay. So initially they are all random, but now now think about your your learning has made so some that, progress. That is after we have made many. Uh, I mean, after we have made many episodes, after we have gone through many episodes, then we are taking that. That's why it's argmax over here. No, no. So we will do it after the first episode also. So, so what could happen is initially they are random. So obviously it's very much possible that some state action pair is actually meaningless, but you have a very high random value initialized for them. It's possible. So, okay. so that can, that can, uh, so what can happen then obviously is that uh, um, after the first episode, no matter what happens, you find that for this state, that action, which is actually a mistake, you still has a maximum and you take that action. Okay, and then you take that action means you actually, okay, okay. you actually set that as your policy. But next time when you, okay. next time when you, you know, come to that same state and you, because you took this policy, because you set your policy to be that, you reduced it. then you will get a bad reward and then you will update it. Mm -hmm. Right. So because initially QSA exists for all the A, that's why we yeah, can just... It will change. always exist for all the A. In fact, the idea is that QSA must exist for all the A and all QSAs must converge. Huh. Right. As I mean, we do more episodes? More and more. Yes, yes, can... yes, yes, okay. yes. But then obviously, uh, there would be techniques. It should not be just any random real number. This is just a theoretical statement here there will be techniques to proper initialization and so on for faster convergence and stuff like that. So theoretically, they will all converge if you do enough number of times, but enough is totally relative. I mean, we, do you want to go through 1 billion episodes or will 1000 be enough, right? So of course, if you can do it 1000 episodes, then you, you want to do it that way. So, so there will be uh, tricks to in, do better initializations and stuff like that so that, uh, you know, you, you don't actually um, end up running this for a very long time. All right. Okay, so next class, what I will do, I, I, I see that it's actually a bit abstract. So I'll actually try to, uh, I'll actually try to construct one example and run that through the class. The the reason why I did not take the uh, blackjack example is that I'm not sure many of you know the game even. So it, it's a game of card which is very different and that's what uh, the book also refers to. Uh, but uh, since that game is not so much intuitive to us, uh, that example may not actually be so much intuitive to us. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, do, I'll try to come up with one example so that you, you learn this. Uh, this Monte Carlo thing in reinforcement learning, uh, we get better intuition about it. Okay, all right. So that's it for today's class. So we'll then see you on Thursday. Ah, reminds me. Let me stop the recording.